Welcome to Answers News. This is April 24th, 2017. And uh, we got a full house for you here today. We got Ken Ham, uh, Dr. George Aperta, myself, Bodie Hodge. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just happen to remember what day it was today. And I remember that years ago, on this date, Ken Ham almost passed out. I remember it. <laughs> Ken Ham can get up and speak in front of thousands of people. It's not a big deal. But today is my anniversary. And, get, and guess what? And, and when Ken went to walk your daughter, Renee, down the aisle to me, it was a good thing my wife was there to keep you from passing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, I, I actually gave your wife, our daughter, uh, an anniversary present. I didn't buy a card because I think cards are a waste of time. Why buy cards? I mean, you just read them and throw them away. So I didn't buy cards. So we bought you a gift certificate to a nice restaurant in the area. Well, thank you. And then she complained that it didn't come with babysitting to look after she the She probably kids. wanted yeah. the card. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, as we get underway here today, hey, uh, George asked if I would share with you something that's on my Facebook. If you go to my Facebook there, you'll see it. Uh, I posted it uh, yesterday. But my wife and I took, in fact, it was Bodie was and her too, yeah. and their kids and uh, one of our other daughters and her husband and their kids. Uh, but we went to a local restaurant after church because it was your son's birthday. Mm -hmm. And so we were there sitting around the table having a nice family time. And often, it's hard to, hard to be out in the public a lot of times when people come up and yeah. they see me and they want to talk to you and so on. That happens a lot, actually. But... Mm -hmm. And when I went to pay the bill at the end, uh, the waitress said, somebody already paid the bill and left you this note. And let me read it to you. The New Testament says we are to honor especially the brethren who lead us and serve the kingdom. Every time I go to the museum in the ark, I'm immediately impressed with how God has used you to carry on his tradition of doing everything well. My father was well known and respected as we grew up, and our family seldom had a moment of peace in public. And so he, he understands <laughs> that it just sits yeah. like that. I want to respect your family time and also give you all an unexpected blessing to encourage you all in your work. And that person, I, did, I didn't even know they were sitting in the rest. I don't know who they were, but they paid the bill. And then it says, be strong and bold as you move forward, never forgetting that without him uh, we each are worthless. But by his grace... We each are priceless. See you in heaven one day, a brother in Christ. That was really special. That was a, a yeah. real encouragement yeah, to us. It really was. Yeah. It was yeah. uh, really special for them to do that. Yeah. Uh, well, as everybody is uh, on here, uh, we'd like you to send all sorts of emojis across the screen uh, so that fireworks. it helps get our reach out there. Fireworks, <laughs> yeah, it gets the reach out there uh, even more. And then uh, I'll monitor some of these comments as uh, Bodie, take it all away. All right, let's get started. This came from fizz.org. A uh, researcher proposes answer for why cave animals go blind. And, uh, you know, people were studying the uh, Mexican tetra. And, you yeah. know, it, yeah, and, and it's an amazing and, Yeah, yeah what, what is it, George? It's an amazing answer. The yeah. ones that are sighted, they simply leave the cave. Yeah, if they yeah, can see, they, they swim out of the cave. And all, okay. all you're left with are the blind ones. <laughs> but they use the word evolution. Yeah, and it's not evolution at all. You know, when you look at right. something like this, it's it just a it loss of It said blindness has evolved repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, evolving, you think of going upward, moving in a direction, you know, it's, it mm -hmm. implies directionality, and right. this is just horizontal. So is this reverse evolution, or then? Going down. Reverse evolution? Well, That's right, if anything, they've lost information, they've lost the But they've lost the it, to see. but then in some ways, too, they don't need it in that mm -hmm. environment, they don't need to see, and sometimes it, it enhances yeah. other abilities. It, but here's so. a good example, they actually say, this is an example of natural selection, Mm -hmm. Well, it can be an example of natural selection, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. th but that's a good example of the but fact that evolution. natural selection is not evolution. Right, it's not evolution. Right. So, so. People are equivocating on natural selection and evolution, which are two entirely and different things. And I think, things. you know, it's probably a multitude of things. It's not just the sight at one's leave. Um, it depends on how easy it is to get in and out of the cave, but I'm sure it's... A, but I just thought that was... You have to do a whole yeah. research study it, to figure a that out. A research study... <laughs> let me, uh, Georgia, let me read it to you to just confirm that you're right in what you said. Yeah. It says... Essentially stated that the reason you have blindness in caves is because the fish that can see simply leave. Okay. Yeah, well, all right. I don't know. Okay. okay. Hey, I don't think way, you need a scientific uh, study to tell you I think you people that. know this, but uh, all the links... I don't see any emojis. All, all the, yeah, what happened to the emojis? Some, Where are they? Uh, all the links <laughs> for the articles, we actually put yeah. them, we pin yeah. them in there, That's put them in as a comment, so mm -hmm. uh, people, <laughs> people can go there themselves and yeah. get those. Okay. All right, this next one comes from Science News. Early dinosaur relatives sported odd mix of bird, crocodile-like traits. 
All right. Well, this is a this is a dinosaur. It's mm -hmm. clearly a dinosaur, and uh, they're wanting to put this on a split uh, right. to split right. off, you know, into birds, and crocodiles, and, and birds, and, and birds, and dinosaur, <laughs> you know, all this kind of stuff. But uh, you know, one of the things that surprised me is they found this in the middle Triassic. So if it's in the middle Triassic, um, you know, dinosaurs were already around at that time. Yeah, and crocodiles birds. were already around at that time. And birds. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, e even by their own story here. Now, I mean, granted, this is flood sediment, but you know, that, that's the way people were looking so, at it. See, what's interesting is whenever they find what they call a dinosaur, they try to make out it looks like a bird, mm -hmm. and then when they find birds, birds. they try to make out they're mm -hmm. dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I like, the last sentence of this article, though, kind of cracked me up. It said, much of what scientists thought they knew is not correct, or is much more complicated. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we would agree. <laughs> hey, yeah. um, somebody, somebody got four of your DVDs today. I think that's what Awesome. Saying. Hope you enjoy them. Wow. <laughs> so, you know. now, the next article is about, no, this is about a bird, or it's about a dog. This is... This is interesting. This one comes from ABC. Funny. Yeah, dinosaur bird fossil. Australian. Discovery. Yeah, this is in Australia. Just Australian, ABC, Discovery. Australian Broadcasting Commission. Right, yeah. Yeah, okay. ruffles feathers in outback Queensland. Uh, you're from Queensland. That's where you're from. Shout out to everyone back there, so... Yeah, but the logic in this can't, this can't be an Australian who wrote this. Well, it, said, <laughs> it says, for it starts off, this is the first fossil of a dinosaur-bird. Okay. So it calls it a okay. dinosaur bird. Mm -hmm. So it, what is it? Well, well, they said it's, it's in the center of Australia, where Australia had an inland sea, mm -hmm. and so that they means said flood of Noah. They said it was close to a seagull. Right, they're about the size of a blackbird. Yeah. So it's like a seagull. Yep. Mm -hmm. They said they would have been like a modern seagull living on the coastline, feeding on fish that would have washed out mm -hmm. and going to sea. Then it says while the discovery of a dinosaur is something many people want to assume paleontologists would enjoy, it was a volunteer who found it. So. They're saying it was... They just keep switching the terminology. Yeah. Yeah. They, they just keep switching well, the terminology. It's just a bird. That, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah It's got it the is. claws on the wing, you know, which but is kind of like an archaeology. So, so this bird, person found these bones, and here's what they said. The first half a dozen pieces I got, we couldn't really assign what it was. It wasn't until we got the humerus that we could say it was definitely a bird. Next no, sentence. A bird. <laughs> when the bird species was confirmed, Mr. Darcy said he was thrilled to be able to say he discovered a dinosaur. <laughs> See, it's the equivocation. They're equating <laughs> birds with dinosaurs. You know, I saw a cardinal sitting outside there the other day, and you know, I mean, do people jump? Up, oh, look, a dinosaur! It's yeah. it's not, it's a bird. That's all. But it that's is. but it just shows you yeah. they're trying to use those terms interchangeably, yeah. Yeah. so that we continue to. Buy well, it's like at the that. Cincinnati Zoo. If you go to the right. bird exhibit, it has a sign that says dinosaurs aren't extinct. They're in here flying around. I mean, it actually, the sign says that. Yeah. Uh, so this is just merely a bird found in flood sediment. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people want to try to take this bird and make it look like a dinosaur, where the previous one, they were taking the dinosaur, trying to make it look well, like a dinosaur. Well, and it looks like ancient birds. There are some ancient birds mm -hmm. in the fossil record that we don't have living representatives of today, so... By the way, the, 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 the comment about mm -hmm. the person that got your DVDs, mm -hmm. they actually put... Dr. Person, I got all of your DVDs Dr. today. Person. And Dr. then person. in the next one it says, I hate spell checker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have you, it have yeah. you had that problem where you text people who <laughs> oh, yeah. spell checker does like, things? What did I just say? It can be dangerous. Yeah. So. But you know, it's interesting. You know, there's there's a modern day bird today. It lives down in South America called a Hatesen. It oh, actually yeah. looks like a Hotesen. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you looked at that, you would think this is an ancient bird. It's got the, the claws on its wings things. and things yeah. like that. And, uh, you know, what we need to do is we need to understand, hey, these birds were alive. They were created on the fifth day of creation. A lot of them have died in the flood. They've survived. They've died out since then. Yep. And, uh, you know, it, it's not a big deal. It's actually easy for us to understand from a biblical viewpoint. Hey, somebody asked, uh, what's our reaction to the science march? You know, the march for science? You know, I, we'll talk about that more on Thursday. Yeah. on Thursday. I wanted to get some articles on mm -hmm. that. But one of the articles I read just basically said the whole thing was a dud. Yeah. It didn't turn out mm -hmm. near what they thought. And it actually goes through yeah. some of the signs that were out there. And, and, oh, I've seen and, and some and of so the pictures we'll, of signs. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that on Thursday because okay. um, yeah. that will be interesting. All right. Yeah. yeah, all right. Next one all comes right. from fizz.org. Uh, killing flu viruses with the help from a frog. All right, Georgia, this is like, this is just awesome, isn't it? All right, frog yeah. mucus, it turns out, <laughs> can be beneficial for killing viruses. So the, Wow, we might be able to get frog mucus milkshakes. Yeah, well, you know how they have... I saw this actually on the um, regular news this morning, and they were talking about you should kiss a frog, you know, like kissing a frog isn't bad for you. Because... Oh, poison dart frog! <laughs> so basically they found... Yeah, but if you kissed a frog, wouldn't it turn into a prince? <laughs> 
<laughs> it did. It turned into Chris, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he'll appreciate that. So, um, but basically what they found was a substance called a peptide, which is kind of like a short little protein in the frog mucus that's actually very effective against the flu virus. And mm -hmm. so they're calling it, I don't know, I'm trying to pronounce it. Well, somebody it. wants a vomit emoji because we're talking about frog mucus. <laughs> All right. the, the substance is called ur urumen, is how I'm going to pronounce it. So, urumen. Or um, maybe it's I'm very not. effective against the flu virus. So this is good because viruses are really hard to develop See? Um, substances against because they change so right. much. And so this might be really good to help us be able to fight See, the flu virus. See, when you go to those health stores and places that sell healthy milkshakes, <laughs> it'll be antiviral milkshakes, <laughs> the frog mucus milkshake. Yeah, that, The mucus that. malt? Hey, it also <laughs> shows you. Oh, who, come oh. on. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what? This is going who, downhill fast. But who knows what other <laughs> other places there are out there in nature that God has allowed yeah. to exist that can be used yeah. to help fight disease. Cool. Well, that's right. Looking at plants, looking at animals. I mean, God has some incredible design in there. When we do this, what we're doing is we're going there. We're mimicking God's design on things. And they found so many, like just in this small sample. Like normally, you'd have to search thousands of of substances and mm -hmm. they only searched like 32 and found four that were effective and one of which is not toxic to humans yeah so which that's is that, that's good news for research cool that's stuff. good research we like yeah, to pull those things research. out yeah all right ken you should do this one. all right next do you know anyone who is bread coming cushioning or ghosting, ghosting. You haven't heard, you don't know anyone. You know, that, that's that's not my generation there Ken. okay fox news had this article <laughs> millennials <laughs> Millennials, they're speaking a different language. Mm -hmm. Millennials continue to fail at relationships with cushioning. Now, if you haven't heard of cushioning, you're not up on things. You need to get up on things. Cushioning, basically, it's a newly corn coined dating term. Do they Did have you know an emoji that? for cushioning? So, so cushioning is basically <laughs> this. I'm going with this guy, but I got my back up. In case this one doesn't uh, work out, I'm it's cushioning. A backup plan. I got my backup. Gotcha. So while I'm with him, I'm texting my backup just to make sure my backup is there. See, I think what yeah. it is, they're so used to backing up their phones, backing up their computers, <laughs> mm -hmm. now they're backing up their dating. So well, well, look got, what they say here. It, it was always awkward when their names would light up on my phone while I was sleeping over at my boyfriend's place. I mean, yes. you can see the morality right yes. there. So uh, I was trying to check out if this relationship was going to work out. And in case, I wanted to keep my back up there without... Well, it's kind of like fast food society. You know, like I always want... Like, or they can't... They're so insecure, they can never be alone. <laughs> like they always mm -hmm. have to have somebody with them, you know. And I said it just really shows they're yeah. failing because they're not following God's design for relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I think about 1 Corinthians 13... It doesn't say love has a backup plan. Well, like, <laughs> love is patient. I tell love is patient. What, what it does show is, what it does show is, what, when you take away an absolute basis mm -hmm. for morality, anything goes. I mean, these these millennials, they have no idea. They just think ah. anything goes. That's right. We, we've seen whole generations now raised to just throw uh, morality out the window, mm -hmm. and so you know, I mean, we we see it uh, in sexual issues like this nowadays. Previous trends have included ghosting, where people gradually stop responding to messages and then disappear on their romantic interests, and then breadcrumbing, where singles continue to leave traces of hope for dating prospects prospects that they're not actually that interested in. But I guess uh, breadcrumbing is sort of a sort of a backup. Cushioning's yeah, more of a, a, solid a solid backup. Solid backup, I guess. And then ghosting is getting rid of your backup. It's just really sad, though, that I'm they don't sure. have better relational skills and they don't, you know, I mean, and that they can't, I guess, be alone. Hey, do you realize that videographer here is a millennial? Yes, I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, smiling at us. So, do, do you agree? Have, <laughs> no, you heard of go, have you heard of ghosting and breadcrumbing and cushioning? You have? She, she has. Oh, all right. Wow. Okay. Well, let's move on. In other news. <laughs> She's not doing them. Okay. Well, we need you to talk to HR. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. all right. Washington Post. Uh, when the separation of church and state leads to children with scraped knees. Uh, hey, hey, by the way, somebody says, I'm glad I'm homeschooling my kids. <laughs> Well, that Amen. doesn't mean that they <laughs> yeah. don't know those terms and aren't doing those Someone things, from so. New Zealand is watching us and from North Carolina. And uh, <laughs> someone responded to your term, mucus malt. <laughs> mucus malt. <laughs> yeah, the frog mucus malt. Okay, go on, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, but this is, uh, this is a case that's going all the way to Supreme Court. Right. And, yeah, uh, you know, it's over, uh, you know, the separation of church and state issues of really trying to put rubber well, mulch uh, you know, in a playground. 
right? The state of Missouri and this Lutheran school wanted to have the shredded tires um, on their playground because mm -hmm. it's safer so if kids fall on it, right. they don't scrape their knees. And they were rejected by the state because they're a religious institution. But the state offers it to other playgrounds. Right. Right. But the state has the Blaine Amendment, and that was an amendment that they wanted to put in the U.S. Constitution back in the 1800s, but it didn't, but a lot of states adopted it that says you basically can't give money to any school that is sponsored by a religious organization. A religious sect, I think, specifically. A religious sect, yeah. And, and really what that was ha having to do with was an issue of Catholicism. Right. Because at that time, you know, the, the schools were run by Protestant uh, evangelicals, and then there were people popping up going in different directions. But that has now been used as a, as a thing to say, well, you can only have right. the secular religion, right. not even Christians can. Uh, and and that, actually, enough. you know, I, I give uh, this lawsuit a great deal of success, I, I think, in the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. um, because it's really a similar situation in a way to what happened in Kentucky with us at the mm -hmm. Ark Encounter yeah. when we applied for a tourism tax incentive, which is a rebate mm -hmm. on the sales tax, this new money we generate, new mm -hmm. sales tax we generate within our facility uh, as, a, as an incentive for bringing a tourist attraction to the state of Kentucky right. and bringing econ economic impact to the state, which mm -hmm. the Ark and the Creation Museum are doing in a massive way, by yeah. the way. And uh, so we were granted that, but then you had the Freedom from mm -hmm. Religion Foundation, Americans United, and so on, uh, who, who were speaking mm -hmm. against this. Americans United for Separation Church and State wrote a letter to the governor, and then the governor said, no, because you're a religious organization, you said you're going to tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can't, you can't have this. So then we took the state of Kentucky to court, to federal court, and won a decisive victory. Right. It was mm -hmm. over a 70-page ruling from the judge who said you can't, discriminate against Christians. This is about the protection yeah. of private right. speech. Just because you're Christian doesn't mean you can't Moral get a benefit level. that we give to everybody else. Otherwise, that would be the state discriminating. And right. that's why I, I give this lawsuit uh, for well, that Lutheran, Lutheran The Supreme Court school. even put off hearing it until they had the ninth judge because they, I think yeah. they knew it was going to be close and yeah. they were going to have to have a dis, you know a mm -hmm. decisive mm -hmm. you know or they're going to have to make sure yeah. I don't know I mean it's sad to think that this would even be close because yeah. it's clearly I mean it clearly passes their own three part test which the Supreme Court has related to this right. mm -hmm. and so I mean it's just shredded but, but you know doesn't doesn't that make it obvious to everybody when you're talking about oh you got a Supreme Court that's half on the right and half mm -hmm. on the left and half conservative and half mm -hmm. liberal which means it, it, it's all to do with your yeah. worldview as to how you interpret the, the law and the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Instead right. of s seeing what the Constitution actually says, mm -hmm. yeah. people know it's to do with your worldview. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, it, it just breaks my heart to see this. Like, hey, we're going to give this to this person, this one, this one, this one, this one, regardless of the belief system, except for you Christians. You know, I mean, right. that, that is a form of discrimination. But they're you know, all belief systems. I, they Doesn't all matter. are. And, and what's funny is they openly state, you know, they're, they're more than happy to give it to secular causes. Right. Which, you know, secular humanism, That's atheism, the these are all right. religions. Yeah. We've dealt yeah. with those sort of things. Yeah, yeah you know, the, the, and, but they're fine with the secularists get on my Facebook and Twitter and all the time saying, we are not a religion. We are not a re They are a religion. It's yeah. a set of beliefs. Yep. How can yeah. you yeah. not? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> of course. If but, they're not religious, they shouldn't even be posting. I mean, right. they, they betray the fact that they're religious by saying that they're not religious. They believe everything got here by natural processes. Yeah. Prove that. Yeah. That's so, their belief, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. By the way, somebody here watching from Romania. Mm. Uh, so people watch from all over cool. uh, the place, and Arizona and Georgia and a lot of different places in uh, America as well. Okay. All right. This next one comes from the New York Times. President Carter, am I a Christian? From Nicholas Kristof. And, uh, you know, this was, uh, you know, around the Easter season when this one uh, popped up. and He's an op-ed columnist. He, he is. And right. he, he got a chance to interview President Carter. I guess he interviewed Tim Keller. He interviewed uh, Tim recently. Keller, too, on this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it was fascinating to see some of his things. Let me just read the first one to get us started here. Uh, he, he was asking President Carter this, former president, uh, how literally do you take the Bible, including miracles like the resurrection? What's the first thing he said? He doesn't believe in six-day creation. <laughs> yeah, really, that's what it I is. I mean, ask a question right about, in. it just jumps right in and yeah. says, uh, I do not believe in a six-day creation of the world that occurred in 4004 B.C. Actually, when he visited the ark, you know he visited the ark yes, when it was under construction mm -hmm. yes. because the head architect was personal friends with him and got him to come and see yeah. the, the woodworking there because he, he loves to work with wood. Yeah. But he was interviewed by the press afterwards because mm -hmm. he allowed one 
reported to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said he believes in evolution and doesn't mm -hmm. believe what yeah. we believe. And he's reiterated that so, here as well. But he's inconsistent because he said, you know, I accept the overall message of the Bible is true. He says he accepts the miracles in the New Testament, the virgin birth, and the resurrection. Well, if you have a scientific background, you shouldn't believe those things either. I mean, he's just being, he's picking and choosing. If he's being, yeah, yeah. if he's going to try to be yeah. consistent. Completely. What's interesting here is Christoph asked this question. He says, what about someone like me whose faith is in the Sermon on the Mount, who aspires to follow Jesus' teaching, but is skeptical that he was born of a virgin, walked on the water, or had a physical resurrection? And he said, am I a Christian, President Carter? And, of course, he dodged the question says, I don't judge. But, you know, to a Christian, if you deny the resurrection, are you a Christian not or not? Christian. If Christ were not raised from the dead, our faith is in vain. If you Absolutely. don't believe in the resurrection, you can't be a Christian. That's right. right. Romans 10, 9 makes that perfectly when clear. When he says, I do not judge, he then says, the Bible said, Jesus said, judge not. But but you've got to take that in context. That's right, exactly. yes. Because the yep. Bible doesn't say not to judge. That's right. It? It's saying not, not to judge falsely. That, right. that, that would be the way it would be measured and back to you. And we can discern. We can look like you just said. Mm -hmm. We can look at the Bible and say, if you yeah. don't believe in a physical resurrection, you're not a Christian. That's well, right. Well, when you tell somebody they're a sinner, you're judging. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Well, you're judging uh, you know, John seven twelve commands us to give a righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. That's the right type of judgment that we're supposed and to then, do. And I think what the op-ed writer really wants is he wants, he's, he's kind of, it's moralism. You know, the Bible teaches yep. this good moral book to teach me good moral thing, but he doesn't want anything else. Any other part yeah. of it. And see, that shocks me that. that they even want the morals from the Bible, you know. Yeah. Why, well, why take they don't, that? they're being inconsistent. Well, that, and that's right. because that's we do have a conscience. The Bible says that in Romans That's too. right. The law's written on their It's heart. interesting, uh, President Carter said, I look on the contradictions among the gospel writers as a sign of authenticity. Yeah. Well, you know, that shocks me because there are no contradictions in the Bible. Right. But if there are contradictions, that, that would take away from its authenticity. Right, exactly. Th th it that, should. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Um, you know, we, we actually have a book series. Uh, volume one here is in red. Volume two is kind of a, a, a greenish yellow looking color here. Uh, demolishing supposed Bible contradictions. And it's powerful. It actually runs through a number of the top contradictions mm -hmm. that people have tried to pull out. A lot of them they try to pull out in Genesis. Uh, but, but just consider, you know, if the Bible wasn't true, why not have contradictions? You see, right. contradictions right. being a bad thing is because a biblical worldview is true. But this is a powerful set. Easy to read, by the way. In fact, we have people, any, anything from a, a Ph.D. scientist, which I think you published mm -hmm. in here, I did, Ken has, yeah. Um, all the way down, uh, in, in the volume two, we actually had a, a kid that was in junior high hmm. write a response to a contradiction. And one of the reasons we did that was we wanted to show people that it, you don't have to be absolutely right. brilliant to do this. Right. You can look this stuff up, mm -hmm. read it in context, and usually you can see your answer yeah. right there when people try to claim there's alleged contradictions. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. You have to get the book. <laughs> I'm trying to get the next it. one. It was really good, actually. Somebody says here, hello from Newcastle, Australia. Somebody from Melbourne. Somebody says, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. I'm sure Oh, uh, yes, Aussie. yes. Mm -hmm. Someone from West Yorkshire in uh, the UK, Ohio, Florida, Ireland. Uh, there are people from all over here. And um, somebody talking about angry faces that people send across. Arr. So then people send all these hearts across, which is uh, really good. And uh, many other uh, places. South Dakota. So it's, it's we even reached South area. Dakota. Say then this is the oh, de wow. Demolishing Supposed Bible Contradictions, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, once again, that's uh, Demolishing Supposed Bible Contradictions. Yeah, you know, what, what, what gives me, and somebody just made the point here, we can't have the message without the messenger when we quote Shakespeare, we say Shakespeare mm -hmm. said. So when we quote Jesus, we need to be able to say Jesus says. Right. So how can you say, I want the message, but I don't want what it literally says? Right. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't make it's sense. It's an inconsistency. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, do these same people come up to a stop sign and say, I know it says stop, but what does it mean? And then put your foot down and go Well, actually, through. there are well, some people that do awesome. that. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, you know, when somebody accepts evolution millions of years and starts denying parts of the Bible, what they're doing is they're grabbing another religion, and they're bringing it over, and they're trying to mix it with their Christianity. That's a form of syncretism. You know, in the Old Testament, you know, some of the godly Israelites started to say, you know what, let's take the Ashtoreths or the Baals, and let's right. mix it with our, right. with our god godly worship. And what happened was the Lord was not happy with them. And I would suggest the same thing's happening well, today. nothing new under the sun, nothing Scripture new. says. Yeah. Yep. And the compromise with evolution mm -hmm. of millions of years, that's rife in our Christian colleges. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that on Thursday, too, mm -hmm. with an article that came out about Wheaton College right, yeah. uh, from mm -hmm. the Wheaton Record. Yeah. We'll talk about that, how, how what they're doing is no different than what the Israelites yeah. were doing. Mm -hmm. And it goes well with this next article. Yeah, this next article comes from the New York Times, The Evangelical Roots of Our Post-Truth Society. Georgia, do you want to take a look at that so, one? So basically what the whole gist of the article is that basically saying even among evangelicals, um, the question is, what is truth? 
Um, it's not just a. It's not just like Christianity versus the rest of the world. Didn't Paul it's, ask a question like that or something? <laughs> yeah, he, he what is truth? truth in the what eye? Is, is right. Question. So it starts off the article talking about Rachel Held Evans, and so she's a former evangelical. She no longer calls herself that. She wrote a book called mm -hmm. A Year in Biblical Womanhood, which was just atrocious. And then she also wrote. Um, used to be called Evolving and Monkey. Yeah, Town. didn't she attack us in that book? Yeah, she she grew up. Um, she went to Bryan College. Grew up in Dayton, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And she attacked AIG, and now she's not a young earth creationist. Um, she's a theistic evolutionist. Mm -hmm. And um, and basically what it's it's doing is saying, I, mean, I think the writer's kind of struggling with, well, even among Christians, there's a lot of, you know, beliefs about different things. So you mm -hmm. talk about a biblical worldview, a Christian worldview, but what does that mean? Because even we say yeah. you have to be really specific when you say things like, I believe in a six-day creation. Well, what does day mean to you? Because, you know, it means different things to different people, you know, even within yeah. Christianity. Well, this is a problem. People are on the outside. They're looking in and they say, well, all these Christians believe all these different things. So, so it can be all these different things. Well, that's the problem. You, you need to go back to the Bible. Right. Exactly. You know, you, you don't judge Christianity based on all these different Christians. You, you, you judge Christianity uh, by, by starting with the Word of God and, and letting that judge us, really. It's, it's interesting. It says here, many evangelical colleges allow faculty and students to question inerrancy, creationism, yeah. and, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then later on, it says, uh, in fact, evangelical colleges themselves may be the best hope for change because members of traditions historically suspicious of a pseudo-scientific view of the Bible should revive that skepticism. In other words... What they're really yeah. what they're really saying is here's the problem. We see it as the problem. They see it. This author sees it as a good thing. Oh, it's a good thing that these colleges are now trying to get yeah. students to question right. the mm -hmm. Bible and not. Mm -hmm. And, and when they say pseudo scientific, they're talking about people believe in six yeah. literal days. Oh, yeah. And we'll have an example on Thursday right. from Wheaton College in, mm -hmm. in and regard to And this is why people need to be so say. careful about where they send their young mm -hmm. people to. Because just because it says Christian college, that can mean a lot of different things. So we yeah. always recommend people go to our website, creationcolleges.org. Um, for more information on where you can find colleges that really stand on the authority yeah. and truthfulness of God's word. Well, yeah, this op-ed writer, by the way, the, yeah. the, this op-ed op uh, writer here, as you read through it all from the New York Times, all they're trying to do is to have a hit at those who take the Bible as we do. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, you know. And they, yeah. they're talking about the Bible and science, and this it, it's it's no different yeah. to the other articles we've read over and over right. again. They did quote they did quote though Dr. Nathaniel Jenison, who's a scientist here at Answers mm -hmm. in Genesis, and so. I'll give him credit for that. At least they, got, they, they at least we got some words and in. Then, and then ripped into his position, well, yeah. <laughs> in our position. So, yeah. But as he points out, people don't read our stuff. So they're they're criticizing us, and yet they've never. Even, it's obvious they've never even read right. what we produce. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, they're, they're actually uh, happy with the fact that you know Christians are compromising and that they're yes. having people there infiltrate to destroy mm -hmm. these universities, yeah. which breaks my heart. But. So someone from New York is on here, and... Uh, 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 from Michigan. So anyway, go All on right. to the next one. Here. Next one comes from NBC. Prehistoric sea creature from 70 million years ago found by elk hunter in Montana. Let me translate that. Sea creature from the flood found by elk hunter in Montana. <laughs> that and should be the headline. NBC. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I... I you know, here in Kentucky, we have all sorts of fossils. And, we do. Millions and here, oh, they're all yeah. over the place. You just step on them. And, and, and here we have a fossil of a sea creature. And I found this one outside the house. It? Yep, but but NBC didn't call. Oh, wow. And and so yeah, let me get <laughs> yeah. that right in front <laughs> right of my right face. Right. So there you go. Shouldn't we have a should we have NBC News have sea creature found by elk hunter in Kentucky? Because you've hunted elk, right? <laughs> I, you know, I've not hunted elk. I've hunted deer, I squirrel, hunted elk. rabbit, turkeys. Everything but elk. <laughs> I've not hunted elk yet. Okay, so, I need to get out and do so some elk sea hunt. creature found by deer hunter. In, by in deer Kentucky. hunter. There we go. Okay. But, so uh, what is the article? <laughs> so Getting why, to the article. So why itself. is this news? Why are we even okay. talking about this? They found this sea creature in rock layers that they professed to be seventy million years ago in an inland sea that translate the flood uh, that flowed east of the uh, Rocky Mountains, and it was a lasmosaur. Right. Uh, which is a larger. And it was a short necked. Well, it's a, yeah, normally they're long necked. They normally mm -hmm. have about 76 vertebrae, but this one only had about 40. And yet it's found in the same sediments that the long necked ones are. So they're like, oh, so the long neck didn't evolve from the short neck. Oh, yeah. so they were it alive says at here, the same time. That's li right. Living around the same time in the same area as a larger one, evidence contradicting the belief that a Lasmosaurus did not evolve over millions of years to have 
longer next. Right. That's right. And of course, evolutionists can change their views all the time, which is what oh, they yeah. do. Because they make up their ideas. Except yeah. they don't change their view that evolution happened. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's right. I mean, yeah. finding both these in flood sediment, yeah, we expect yeah, it. We expect so. that. Yeah. Okay, we're getting towards All right, the yeah, end we're here. running out of the time. So let's do one more here from uh, msn.com. Uh, Receding glacier causes immense Canadian river to vanish in four days. And this is Slim's River, mm -hmm. uh, which was essentially fed by a, a mounting glacier and some of uh, what was going on up there. And over the course of four days, it, it essentially stopped flowing down its normal path right. and started flowing somewhere else. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people were shocked. Oh, no, climate change. What did we do? Yeah, global warming <laughs> again. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think they're just misappropriating. You know, it's just flowing well, in a different well, direction. I mean, it just shows you that big drastic changes can happen in a very short can period happen of quickly. time. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take... Under the right conditions, yeah. and whether or not it's man-caused, you know, that's still mm -hmm. up in the air for many, for many scientists. Um, but this just shows that things can happen quickly. And yeah. things change. Yeah. Yeah, and things change. And but it they always want to blame it on global warming. Right. right. Say global Everything. warming. We, you know, one of the things that shocked... Or climate change. Yeah, one of the things that shocked the people out there was, you know, uh, the way the river flowed, it was kind of... It had a big area, so it was mm -hmm. kind of marshy and really, mm -hmm. really muddy. But, uh, you know, it, it dries up, and they were able to go out there, you know, fairly yeah, quickly. Cool. You know, it dried up like, wow, we can actually walk on this, you know. Yeah. So it kind of surprised them how fast those conditions can yeah. actually And change. by the way, if I can read, I think this is a really good comment here. Mm -hmm. The scariest day will be when one who rejects Jesus as their Lord and Savior will stand before Jesus and find that their names are not written in the book of life and will be separated from God forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that will be the scariest yeah. day. Yeah. The, the Bible says a lot of people profess to say, Lord, Lord. And uh, that's, that's why we do what we do, to get the message out there. Yeah, we so. want people to understand the Bible's true from the first verse to the last verse. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's what we're on about here at the Ministry of Answers in Genesis, about the authority of the Bible from the very first verse. But, so, uh, hey, before we finish, you know, we always like to do, end with the fireworks. Oh, yeah, we need so we want, fireworks. want to see how many of these emojis come across the screen. Lots of them like, <laughs> like love, fireworks. Love, and, love. And until you do that, we can't finish here. Is that right? But, hey, happy no, I have a meeting. <laughs> By the way, happy anniversary, Bo. Yeah, it's happy, happy yeah, anniversary. Send some emojis yeah. across How many years? Across to say happy years. anniversary. 13 years. To Bo. Yep. 13, that's all. 13, yeah. it, feels, know, it feels like millions of years. For my wife and I. For my wife and I. I had to preempt him on that This one. year it's going to be four, 44 or 40. Oh, something. you better know. Oh, boy. Okay, it's 47. At least I know. Okay, 970. Mine was 20. No, I know that. Uh, 40, it's, I think it's 45. So do you, want, do you want to you babysit sure. our kids this weekend? 40, 40, what's that? Hopefully she's not watching. <laughs> so, oh, you're getting all these hearts. Uh, all right, we're getting the fireworks. Happy anniversary. All right. April 24th, uh, 2017. This is Answers News signing off. God bless you.